Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to the channel, Fuller here. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the difference between the Metasound patch and the Metasound source and give you an example of when you would use one instead of the other. So let's jump right in. Okay, so by now most of us are used to using Metasounds um, and, uh, but maybe you've been avoiding using a Metasound patch because you're not sure exactly what the purpose is and I like to look at it kind of, uh, it's almost like a component. Let's say you have an analog synthesizer, and let's say that synthesizer has 12 voices. Well, inside that synthesizer are little microchips that are each doing a bunch of different electronical, uh, electronic things. And instead of building that into the circuit, you will use chips to do each of those things, those microchips, if you will, all do the same function, but you might use five or six of them on your circuit board so that you can, you know, build an instrument around them. Same kind of concept for a Metasound patch. A Metasound patch is like a function. It's a, it's a group of things doing something that you may want to reuse later. Uh, and a couple reasons to use the Metasound patches. One, and what I'm going to show you in this tutorial, is that you can use it uh, to you know, save time for one, because you can kind of script out the, the code of what you want to build and then use duplicates of that with different parameters so that you can build something more complex. The other thing is um, it just keeps your uh, Metasound graph a lot cleaner. Um, but more importantly, you can quickly access functions that you've already written so you don't have to recode them over and over and over. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to create a Metasound patch and we'll just gonna right click on that. We're gonna go to sounds, Metasounds, Metasound patch. Now I'm in Unreal 5.1. Um, I'm not sure if this has changed in two yet, but if it has, I'll do an update. So we're gonna call this MSP, Metasound patch, and I'm just gonna call this drummer. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna use the Metasound patches to create a random drum sequencer with a wave player, and then I'm gonna use that inside of a Metasound to uh, trigger different sounds. And so you'll see how we can kind of build on the complexity, but it actually makes the whole process a lot quicker than if we were just gonna build the whole thing inside of a Metasound graph. So once we've created the Metasound patch drummer, we're gonna open this, and we're gonna dock this up here, okay? So the first thing I want to do is I want to right click and I want to create a wave player. And this is all, you know, very basic stuff. If you don't know about Metasounds, you can check out my Metasound 101 video. Inside this, we're going to, uh, oh, one quick thing. I have imported these five sounds, a kick, snare, snare two, hi-hat, and cymbal. So we're gonna be using those, those are just one-shot audio drum samples. By the way, I just, I put AXs in front of them just so they're organized as audio. That That's my little shorthand for audio. All right, so we're gonna open this. We're gonna select the kick. Sounds, um, sounds like this. Perfect for what our purposes are. One thing to consider about uh, Metasound patches is they don't inherently have inputs and outputs. So um, you can't just like, you know, use, you can't directly hook triggers and stuff up to them. Um, matter of fact, let me just show you here. Let me, uh, all right, let's just stop right here. This is our Metasound patch. All we have right now is a wave player. And uh, let's go over here. Let's uh, go ahead and create our Metasound because I want to show you how this kind of works. You go to sounds. Uh, now we're going to make a Metasound source here. We're going to call that MS for Metasound and we'll call this drummer. Uh, engine, we'll just call this engine because it's kind of kind of make the whole thing work. All right, so now when we open the meta sound, you'll notice we have a on play, we have an audio out, and we have an on finished. We're not going to use the on finished. Um, whereas in the meta sound patch, we don't have those nodes. So the meta sound patches don't have those nodes, but what we can do is we can create inputs and variables that we can fill in from the meta sound. So um, let me show you what I mean. So once we create the Metasound patch, it's available in our Metasound. So we're over here on our drum Metasound, drummer engine Metasound, and I'm just gonna type MSP, and now you'll see I have available this Metasound patch. So here it is. Now you'll notice there are no inputs or outputs on this, 
even though there are some in here. So the question is, how do we access these? And the way to do that is you drag off here, and I'm going to go, uh, we're going to do a promote to graph input. So now we have this input here. So now that we have an input, when we go back to our meta sound, we have populated the reference here with an input, which is great. And you can pretty much do that with any of the, um, so say we want to go out here, let's populate this with a graph output. And we're going to call this, um, let's just call this audio out. Now, when we save this, let's look over here and then boom, there it is. Uh, so you're already starting to kind of see the power of this. Now, we haven't really done anything spectacular in here, but we're about to do that. So let's go back to our meta sound patch. I'm going to disconnect this node and bring it over here because we're going to need that later. What I want to do though is when our meta sound plays this, uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to trigger a trigger repeat. So again, we're inside of the meta sound patch. So all of this is going to be inherent to this patch. I'm going to come off here. We're going to turn this into BPMs per second. And then the other thing we're going to want to do is um, we're going to come over here. So now that we got our trigger repeat set up, we're going to do a trigger sequence. And we're going to sequence four of these bad boys. So now every time this trigger repeats, it's going to go out zero, one, two, three, and then it's going to loop. So we got four trigger sequences. Now what we're going to do is we're going to filter these. We're going to filter, trigger filter. And I need four of these guys. So I need four trigger filters. And you'll see why in a second. And then this is going to kind of become the logic for which beats these uh, this wave player is triggering on. Now what I want to do is I want to bring this into a trigger any four. And we're going to bring all of these heads, because that's a heads tails kind of an odds thing. And then we're going to go out into the wave player. So now before I hit play, you can't really play it here. You got to play it inside the meta sound. So we're going to go back to the meta sound graph. We're going to drag the on play into our meta sound patch play, which will trigger this. And then we're going to trigger the audio out to our meta sound audio out, which basically brings this audio output here. So now when I hit play, you're hearing this thing trigger through all of these and play the meta sound. Now that on its own is not that impressive, but let's do a little bit more and you'll see kind of why this is awesome. So now let's go in here. Let's change the probability. Let's say we always want it on the downbeat. Let's say half the time, we, which is half, we're going to half of this time, this has a 50% probability now. So this probability is a 50% chance heads, 50% chance, chance tails. But I want less than that. Let's go 40%. And then let's say we always want it on the three. And then let's say we want like a 20% or a 30% chance that it's going to be on the four. So now when we play it, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. So you hear this kick drum being generated with a certain probability. Let's call that step one of creating the meta sound patch. But you're probably asking yourself, well, why wouldn't I just do this inside the meta sound? Well, and that's a great question. And let's expand on it why this is cool. So let's go back to the meta sound patch. All right, so right now we're just doing a kick drum. But here's what I want to do. I want to bring out the BPM as an input. Okay, so now we have a BPM that we can set from the meta sound. Then I also want to bring out this function right here, the wave asset. I want to make this a variable uh, input. I want to make this an input, not a variable, an input. I want to make this a wave asset input. Now when we go back to the meta sound, check this out. We have access to this sound. Why is that a big deal? Here's why. Because now we have our kick drum triggering, but let's say we wanted to tr trigger a hi-hat also. So here's what's cool. In our meta sound, we can just go here, we can 
pull in, we can copy this Metasound patch drummer again. We can trigger it to play. Let's add a mixer here because we're going to start mixing um, some audio here. Let's add a four channel mixer. Now, let's change this to hats, hi hats. So now we're going to hear the kick and the hi hat with the same probability. Okay? So they're 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 triggering different things because the probability is different each instance. Sometimes you hear the kick, sometimes you hear the hi hat. They have the same probability parameters, but they're in real time generating obviously more uh, random probabilities. So see how quickly we just did that with the hi-hat. Let's say we want to do with the snare. So we'll come in here, same thing. So instead of remaking all, oops, sorry about that. So instead of remaking all of this logic, all I'm doing is I'm just bringing this, bringing another one in. Let's bring it in here. And this time, let's change this to snare. And we'll go with that snare. Now listen. So you're hearing all of these things now randomly generate. Very cool stuff. But let's take it one step further. So let's go um, into here. Now let's watch this. Let's say we wanted to manipulate the probability on each of these. So what we can do here is we can drag this out as an input. Probability, input, probability, input, probability. Promote to, we're just right now we're just promoting all of these to a graph input on the probability. And now we have four probability inputs. And so check this out. So when we go back to our meta sound, now let's look, let's expand this a little bit because it's kind of getting a little big. Um, now, as you can see, here's what's stinking awesome is that we've got all of this. We have access to this now. So now let's say we want kick one and one. Let's say the snare we barely ever want on the one, but we always want it on two, and we always want it on four, and we sometimes maybe half and half want it on three. Now check this out. The, the snare is gonna be more of like a, it's gonna force almost like a two, four groove. Oh, I put that on the hi-hat, sorry. <laughs> let's change that back. Let's go to zero, one, Go point three and one. And you know what? Let's keep the hi-hat actually. Let's do the hi-hat on all four all the time. One is all the time, zero is never. So you'll see. So you got the hi-hat on every beat. You got the snare. Oh, I don't want the snare on one. I don't know what I'm thinking. I'm out of my mind. That's what I want right there. So now we'll hear it. So now we're creating basically this four times, but we're doing it super easy and super clean with the MetaSound patch. Now, let's also say in this MetaSound, let's say we want to change the BPM. Well, now that we have access to these, we can actually change this in to an input, and we can come off here, and we can connect this to all three of these. And now, uh, let's go all the way to 220 from, I don't know, 50 and 90. So now when we play, all these are getting 90, but we can speed this up if we want to. Because this BPM is now feeding this information to all these instances of the MetaSound patch. So you can kind of start to see already how, how big this thing is getting and how it's um, g really gives you some you know, good structure to build a, a complex mechanism, um, but keeping it simple and more importantly, quick quicker to do. Um, I want to show you one more thing. Um, that's kind of like the, you know, the overarching principle of the meta sound patch versus the meta sound. But I do want to show you one more important thing, um, which makes this even more powerful. I want to, uh, let's take, let's bring the sound into the game. So what I want to do here is I want to make a blueprint for the meta sound. Uh, and I'm going to call this BP, we'll call this meta drummer. Now what I want to do is inside this blueprint, 
I want to add the audio. Um, I want to add the meta sound, uh, drummer uh, synth engine, uh, drummer engine. So that's our sound that we used. Okay, uh, we'll just rename this meta drummer. Okay, so now what I can do is on uh, event begin play, I can actually uh, send a parameter to that. So what I want to do now is I want to use the blueprint to set the tempo of the medicines and the meta sound. So we're gonna we're gonna pull this blueprint into the game, and when you hit play, it's in the game. But what we want to do is we want to set float parameter of the meta drummer that we just did. Again, if this is a little confusing, go back and check out my uh, meta sounds 101. But inside our meta sound, we have this called BPM. So we're gonna in uh, the name BPM. We're gonna set the tempo, let's just set it to 146. So now when the game starts, it's gonna be at 146. Which is super cool, but even cooler would be able to set that tempo before we even, you know, randomly when we set the game. So now that it's a blueprint, we can come off here, we can promote this to a variable. We'll call this variable BPM starter. And then we're gonna go over here and we we'll click Instance Editable. So now when we go in our game, we click on this, and then right over here you'll see BPM Starter. So let's, we can put whatever we want, let's go 88. Now we're globally sending that tempo to that meta sound, which is playing all of those meta sounds in that tempo. Now obviously this is an extremely powerful thing. You can save a lot of time and your uh, meta sound graphs look a lot cleaner. One other quick thing is inside the, um, once you have these inputs here, you can put those also in the blueprint and you can send parameters to them in the game and you can make them instance editable. So you could essentially um, change the tempos, you could change the probabilities, you could spawn different ones and make different prob probabilities. So you can get pretty complicated with it. But um, anyways, I hope this video was helpful. I know it was a little bit shorter one, not too crazy of a video, but uh, I think it's a really important concept to know as you're building meta sounds, uh, especially in the game, uh, help you kind of keep track of what your functionality is on kind of a macro and a micro level. And it allows you to just continue to reuse uh, code that you know works. And if you want to change that code or tweak that code, we could go back in there and we could, you know, add some sort of delay in there. And now suddenly all of our, uh, all of the instances of that have a delay node in it. So there's a lot of cool things you can do. Hope this video was helpful. Thanks for uh, checking out the channel. Please like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot and we'll see you in the next video.